Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, Jay Briggs here from PickDogs.com, bringing you out my NBA Jam session on February 10th, 2023, man. If you're looking for more of this great content, y'all know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and drop your like down in the comments. As you know, I love going through, seeing who y'all like. If you're looking for my best bets, the ones that I'm placing tonight, and best bets from the top handicappers on the planet, man, check us out over at PickDogs.com and click that premium picks tab. If you're looking for my $15 NBA Jam Session play and all my bets for today's action, you can check out my handicapper page, man. The link is in the description. It'll take you right there, man, and it'll show you all my bets for today's action, my long-term packages, 3-day, 7-day, 30-day. Don't be afraid to hop on one of those, man. You get all my plays for this weekend's action. Say so you hop on a three-day, you get all my plays for today, Saturday, Sunday, which includes all my NBA, all my college basketball, all my NHL, my Super Bowl picks, all that great stuff, man. So don't be afraid to hop on that, man. Uh, it's a great weekend to do so. We're running pretty high right now. Uh, also, my $15 NBA Jam Session play can be picked up there, man. We've hit three in a row, including 13 of our last 21, man. We're trying to get red hot again in the NBA. That's about 61% in that span. So we're trying to get back hot on that, man. Uh, scoop all that up over at Pig Dogs Premium. Follow me on Twitter at ParlayGodJays. That's where I usually update y'all on late injury news. Let y'all know if my mind changes due to late information coming out of the association, man. I also drop free parlays, free plays, all that great stuff over there, man. We got a huge card tonight in the NBA, 11 games, 9 times out of 10. I'm going to drop a free parlay for y'all tonight, so be on the lookout for that. We're going to try to smash tonight per usual, man. So without further ado, man, let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. In our first matchup of the night, man, we got the San Antonio Spurs out on the road facing the Detroit Pistons. Pistons laying three at the crib, total 235. Hey, man, we got two bad teams. Quite honestly, I'm not betting this game. If I were to bet this game in any capacity, I think with two bad teams in a 50-50 type game, both teams at, what, 14 wins this season, Detroit with 42 losses, San Antonio with 41 losses. I think this is a 50-50 type game. I can see this game really going either way. So if I were to bet it at all, in my opinion, I think we take a shot with the San Antonio Spurs, the more desperate team, the team that's lost 12 games in a row. This, If they win a game, man, if they were going to win a game, this is the spot for them to do so. So I do lean their direction in our first matchup of the night, man. We have seen them beat up on this Pistons team once already this season, 121-109 on the 6th of January. That game was in San Antonio, though. And right now, currently, if you ask me who's the better team, who has the better players, I would probably say the Detroit Pistons. They got Bojan. They just traded for um, a few guys yesterday. So uh, James Wiseman, and I thought they said he, he might be starting as soon as he gets in there. So it's a nice little pickup for them. But I don't know, man. On this Friday night, I think the Spurs actually show up here tonight. And uh, again, like I said, I'm probably not betting this game, but if I were to bet it in any capacity in a 50-50 type game like this where I could really see it going either way, uh, they're going to give me plus 140 with the San Antonio Spurs. Not a bad place to be. So in our first matchup of the night, I do lean Spurs winning the game outright. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Phoenix Suns out on the road facing the Indiana Pacers. Phoenix laying one and a half, total 230 and a half. It's going to be a good game here tonight, but um, and I need to see this final injury report before I fire something up, but right now, if you're going to ask me where I'm leaning, I am leaning Pacers, and I think they win the game outright, quite honestly. I know they've lost four of their last five, um, you know, but they've covered in two of their last three, and those three games were the games I'm more so worried about, as that's when they got their engine back, their best player, their all-star in Tyrese Halliburton, man. Um, they beat the Sacramento Kings that first game. They got hammered by Cleveland the next game after that. And then they did lose their last game out against the Miami Heat. They were our best bet that day, but they covered the spread. So we were we were happy to see that 116-111. I think they were getting seven against Miami. We were not laying seven with Miami on their home floor, the worst home cover team in all of the NBA. We'll talk about them in a minute, though. Here in this one, I think it's just a great spot to go ahead and take the Pacers, man. I think they get off the snide. Uh, I think they win this game outright. I don't like the spot for Phoenix on a back-to-back. Um, after losing last night to the Atlanta Hawks, this is going to be their fifth straight road game. A back-to-back -back in a fifth straight road game is just not a spot I want to be, especially not for a Phoenix Suns team who's already shorthanded. Uh, you got to remember they did the trade, so they don't have Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson. Um, they're kind of missing their bench guys. Um, I highly doubt TJ Warren plays tonight. He could, um, but I, I don't think so. We know Kevin Durant's still out. Devin Booker. Um, it's questionable tonight. I need to see if he plays tonight. But quite honestly, even if he does play, I still like the Pacers on the money line on their home floor. The Pacers this season, 
are 18 and 11 straight up um, against the spread on their home floor. Man, the Pacers play good basketball at home. And straight up, the Pacers are pretty good at home as well. As the Indiana Pacers straight up at home are 17 and 12. I think they win this game outright. Don't like the spot for the Suns one more time. Fifth straight road game. Also a road back-to-back -back after losing last night. They're also pretty short-handed. I think the Pacers uh, start to return back to the Pacers team we were making money on before Halliburton got hurt. And I think the Pacers win this one. So for me, here in this one tonight, I'm taking the Pacers on the money line. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the New York Knicks out on the road facing the Philadelphia 76ers. Philadelphia laying 5.5, total 232. We got a good one here, man. And we just saw these two teams play really recently um, on the 5th, actually, of February with the New York Knicks winning that one in Madison Square Garden, 108 97, an 11 point win for the Knicks, which was really surprising to me, in my opinion, actually, because the Knicks never beat the Sixers when Joel Embiid plays. It's just what happens, man. I'm not sure if many people know this or not, but Joel Embiid now against the New York Knicks straight up in his career is 13 and 2. It was 13 and 1 before that last matchup just the other day. And that alone has me ready to take the 76ers on their home floor on the money line. I don't do this often where I give a money line rather than the spread, but I think tonight is just a good spot where we just take the Sixers on the money line. Could be a nice parlay filler. Could just be a good, you know, straight bet. It is minus 225, so it is some juice, but I do think they win this game, in my opinion. I think it's a perfect bounce back and get right opportunity. Um, like I said, man, the Sixers... They play their best basketball at home, 20-8 and eight straight up on their home floor. Joel Embiid has only lost to the Knicks twice in his entire career. I think they bounce back tonight on their home floor and put it to the Knicks. I worry about the spread, laying it with Philly. I know Philly is good at home against the spread as well, but the Knicks are really good against the spread out on the road as well too, as the Knicks are the best road cover team in all of the NBA. For me, not going to overcomplicate it in this one. I'm just going to take the Sixers straight up to win this basketball game. Um, I think they get right on their home floor. They they just play three straight road games, and uh, I think they return home and win this one. The Knicks have been playing good basketball, too, as they've won three of their last four. But I think tonight they lose on the road to the Philadelphia 76ers. So I'm trusting in Joel Embiid. He is questionable day-to-day, -day, but I do think he goes, and I do think the Sixers win this game outright. So Sixers money line for me here in this one tonight. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Charlotte Hornets out on the road facing the Boston Celtics. Celtics laying 10.5, total 228 and a half. And of course, the lane here is on the Boston Celtics. Um, it's hard not to even look in the direction. It is just a lane at this current time of day because the Celtics do have a lot of people on this injury report. Uh, Jason Tatum day to day. Marcus Smart looks like he's out. Al Horford still day to day. Robert Williams still day to day. And the guy they traded for, Mike Muscala, looks like he's uh, day to day as well. But, of course, we're leaning Celtics here in this one. Um, they've started to play good basketball again. They've won four of the last five. They've covered in three of their last four. They've already hammered this Charlotte Hornets team three times this season. This is the last matchup between them. The Celtics won the first one, 140-105. They won the second one, 122-106. They won the third one, 130-118. The Charlotte Hornets, man, they just traded away. They're probably their second best player in Mason Plumlee. They've lost three of their last five by nine plus. Of course, we're leaning Celtics in this one. I would like to see the final injury report before I officially fire it up, but I don't think LaMelo Ball and Scary Terry have enough to keep this game within double digits. I mean, within uh, 10 digits. So I think the Celtics win this one by 15 plus pretty comfortably. So I do lean the direction I want to see the final injury report again, though, before I officially fire it up. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Utah Jazz out on the road facing the Toronto Raptors. Raptors laying seven, total 230 and a half. The Jazz, man, are one of our money-making teams early in the season, man. They're starting to return back to the median. They're now two games under 500, and the Raptors are starting to play better basketball. The Utah Jazz have lost now three straight, three straight at home as well. And quite honestly, they got hammered in the last two. The Minnesota Timberwolves 100% put it to the Utah Jazz in the last one, 143-118. They lost the game before that as well as 10-point favorites to the Dallas Mavericks by 13 points. And then they lost to Atlanta the game before that, 115-108. I've not liked what I've seen from the Jazz here recently, man. They just coming off the long homestand. They lost the last three of the homestand where they play their best basketball. Now they're on the road facing a Toronto Raptors team who's starting to play better basketball. 
and uh, they're at home where they historically play their best basketball. Usually, man, I'm, I come here and tell y'all, laying points with the Toronto Raptors. You're asking to get your money took. I say that sometimes, but I actually like the spot tonight for the Raptors, and I am going to lay the seven with them. They've won three straight against San Antonio, Memphis, and Houston. I know the San Antonio and Houston are like, eh, but they did beat Memphis out on the road, and Memphis is dominated at home, so that was a really good win for them. They returned home in this one, and here's my thinking, honestly. All For the last two, three weeks, all we've pretty much been hearing is this Toronto Raptors team is getting ready to blow up this team. And OG Ananobi's getting ready to get traded, probably Fred Van Vliet. I was hearing some Siakam noise. I was hearing some, you know, a lot of those little wing defenders that the Toronto Raptors got. Some Scotty Barnes talk that some of those guys might get traded. But I think the Raptors came down, sat together, and said, hey, we're going to make a push this season. This is probably our last hoorah, our last run at it. Let's give it everything we got. And I think that resonates in locker rooms. I really do. And I think tonight could be a night where we see the Raptors appreciate that and they come out here tonight and put it to this Utah Jazz team. This Jazz team is not playing good basketball right now. And I could see this Raptors team winning this game by double digits, quite honestly. I usually don't like laying double digits with the Raptors. I don't. I don't. I rarely like laying points at all with the Raptors, but I think tonight it's just a combination of things that uh, sets up well for the Raptors to get a win and a comfortable win on their home floor in Toronto. Give me the Raptors. I'll lay the seven here in this one tonight. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Houston Rockets out on the road facing the Miami Heat. Miami laying 11 at the crib, man. Total 223. Come on now, man. Laying 11 with Miami at the house is not a place I want to be. I would advise y'all, do not lay this 11 with Miami. Even if it wins and covers, it's not a good place to be, in my opinion. Don't listen to me, though. Uh, but the worst cover team in all of the NBA, laying double digits. Come on now, bro. I know they're a better team than their ATS record, but do you really want to lay 11 points with a team that's only covered in 32% of their home games? They're 8-17-2 against the spread on their home floor the worst in the nba worse than charlotte worse than dallas worse than detroit worse than everybody worse than everybody bro it's not a good place to be in my opinion laying 11 with the miami heat but in that same breath bro i can't really come in here and tell you to try to grab the points with the rockets either in this game as much as my hatred for the heat is i can't tell you to grab the points with the houston rockets either as they are the second worst Road cover team in the NBA, bro. They, they are just as garbage on the road covering as the Miami Heat are covering at home, man. The Houston Rockets out on the road against the spread are 9-18, and 18, covered in 33.3% of their road games. They're pretty much dead even. I think tonight is a stay-away game, quite honestly. Me, personally, I'm not having no action. I'm staying away from this game completely. If y'all just really, 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 really want to lean here in this one, y'all know what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you to fade the Miami Heat on their home floor. We've been doing it all season. It's probably my favorite thing to do is to fade the Miami Heat on their home floor. But if there is any spot where the Miami Heat pound the team on their home floor, it could theoretically be tonight. Hence why I don't want any action on this game. Um, but that's just my spiel. Not betting this game at all. If I were to lean anywhere, it would probably be Rockets because I love fading Miami at home. But, again, if Miami were to blow out a team at home in any spot this season, it would probably be this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves, a.k.a. the House of Disappointment, man. They're out on the road facing the Memphis Grizzlies. Grizzlies laying 6.5, total 236. We got a good one here tonight, man. Uh, we've seen these two teams face off three times already this season. Minnesota is leading the season series 2-1. to one. They won the last two matchups. Both were in Minnesota. 111-100 on the 27th of January and 109-101 on the 30th of November. The Grizzlies won the first one 114-103 on the 11th of November. And quite honestly, I think this one goes pretty much like that first one uh, with the Grizzlies kind of putting it to the Minnesota Timberwolves on their home floor. I know Memphis has only won one of their last four, but they won their last one on their home floor against the Chicago Bulls pretty handedly, 
And I think that's just a tale of the tape. But the Grizzlies are about to start getting back in that mode, especially on their home floor, man. It's not really a good spot to be trying to fade them, especially not for the House of Disappointment. I know the House of Disappointment did show up in their last game and absolutely took the Utah Jazz behind the shed, 143-118 out on the road. Um, and they've won three of the last five with wins coming over the Nuggets and the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they've been playing some better basketball. I will give them some credit, but I just don't like the spot for them here tonight, quite honestly. Um, all the joking and laughing going on with the Grizzlies right now on social media. I thought y'all were fine in the West. I know that seems like all jokes and stuff, but if there's one team that's on social media for sure and takes all that to heart, it's the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm pretty sure about that, and I'm pretty sure that they come out here tonight and win this game pretty convincingly. I'm fading the house of disappointment. Y'all know I have no problem doing so. I know they've been playing better basketball. I know the Grizzlies have been struggling, but let's not confuse ourselves. The Grizzlies are still one of the best home cover teams in all of the NBA, one of the best home teams in all of the NBA, and I think we see them get right here tonight on their home floor. 16-10-1 straight up. Um, no, 16-10-1 against the spread uh, on their home floor are the Memphis Grizzlies. And straight up at home, the Memphis Grizzlies are 22-5. and five. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, they go stupid dummy crazy on their home floor. These are the spots where the Minnesota Timberwolves usually fall flat, a.k.a. why they're named the House of Disappointment. Me, me personally, I'm on the Grizzlies. I'll lay the 6.5 as I think they win this one really comfortably here tonight. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the red-hot Cleveland Cavaliers out on the road facing the New Orleans Pelicans. Cleveland road favorites in this one, laying two and a half, total 225. It's a really good game here tonight, man. We got the Cleveland Cavaliers red-hot coming into this one. Um, this is going to be their third road game in their last four games. Uh, but they've won four straight, and they've won all four of those by 15-plus. Do we really want to fade Cleveland right now, man? They just beat up on the Pistons, 113-85. Beat the Wizards out on the road, 114-91. Beat the Pacers out on the road, 122-103. And beat the Grizzlies at home, 128-113. The Cleveland Cavaliers are in that mode. On the other side, man, we got the Pelicans, who have started to play better basketball as well. They've won three straight after losing 10 straight. So, interesting spot for them, man. They, uh... All three of those were at home against the Lakers, Sacramento, and Atlanta. This is going to be their fourth straight home game. So, really, really good game here in this one, man. Me personally, if y'all want to know where I'm at, I think y'all know I love Cleveland. Uh, we really take Cleveland almost every opportunity we get on their home floor as they are the best home cover team in the NBA. But here in this one tonight, man, I've liked what I've seen from the Pelicans here recently, man. And I've been high on the Pelicans a lot, man. And I think they mess around and win this game outright. That's just how I see it, man. They've won three straight at home. I think they go for their fourth straight. I know they were on that little span where they were playing bad basketball. They lost 10 straight basketball games. They were without Brandon Ingram in that, a lot of that in that span. He did come back. It took a minute to get that rust off. He, we saw him have a really good game against the Lakers. And since then, the Pelicans have hit the ground running. They're still at home here in this one, and I think, quite honestly, they pull this one off. Cleveland is not the same juggernaut out on the road as they are at home, man, as Cleveland is 11-15-2 um, against the spread out on the road. The uh, New Orleans Pelicans play their best basketball on their home floor as the New Orleans Pelicans are. They are 20-9 and nine straight up on their home floor. I think they get to 21-9, and nine, quite honestly. Me... I'm taking the Pelicans on the money line on their home floor. I think the Cleveland Cavaliers are playing really good basketball. They're going to be still one of the top teams in the East. I just don't like the spot for them here tonight. I'm taking the Pelicans. I'm taking them on the money line here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Oklahoma City Thunder Buddies, a.k.a. the cover buddies, man, a.k.a. the best cover team in all of the NBA, man, our favorite money-making team this season. They're out on the road facing the Portland Trailblazers, another one of our teams we like to bet on. Portland's laying three, total 241. Uh, Portland has been playing better basketball. They've won three of their last five. They did get a cover and win in their last one against the Golden State Warriors. 125-122 was the score in that one. They had lost the two previous games before that to the Milwaukee Bucks, 127-108, and the Chicago Bulls, 129-121, won the two previous out on the road against the Wizards and the uh, Grizzlies. We've seen these two teams here, the Thunder Buddies and the Blazers, play twice already this season. The Thunder won both in a home-and-home -home situation. Uh, the Thunder won the first one, 123-121, on the 19th of December, and the second one, 
no, I'm sorry, 101 298 on the 21st of December as well. Both were in Oklahoma City, like I said, in a home and home situation. I know the Blazers have been playing better basketball, man, but I'm sticking with our team we've been on for majority of the season. They're the number one cover team in the NBA for a reason. We just saw them pull out a huge money line win in their last one over the Lakers in a national televised game with a lot of eyes on that game. They showed up, played a good game, and that one beat the Lakers straight up with LeBron passing Kareem. I think that momentum carries over here tonight, man. They're only two games under 500. I'm really high on this um, Oklahoma City Thunder Buddies team, man. Y'all know I have no problem putting my money on them. I think they cover this line tonight, and quite honestly, I think they win the game outright. Um, so for me, me personally, I'm taking the Thunder plus the three. Probably going to sprinkle some on the money line as well. Um, I like betting the Blazers. I don't really like the spot for them here in this one. I think the Thunder beat them for the third straight time this season. So give me the Thunder plus the three here in this matchup tonight. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got my favorite team, the Dallas Mavericks. We're out on the road facing the Sacramento Kings. Kings lane two, total 233. Of course, y'all know where I'm at, man. I'm taking the Mavs on the money line in this one. I think this is a perfect spot for them to display how dominant we're going to be with all our guys in there. Luka Doncic is questionable tonight. I think he plays. I think we get the debut of Kyrie and Luka Doncic, and I think we put it to the Sacramento Kings tonight. Quite honestly, it's just how I see it. Um, I think it's going to be a flat spot for the Sacramento Kings. First game home after a long road trip. They kind of struggled in that road trip as well, man. Um, they did win the last two of it against the Houston Rockets. They were not pretty, though. Uh, well, one was. The other wasn't. I have not liked what I've seen from the Kings here recently. Um, they barely, and I mean barely, and got lucky and escaped against the Rockets in their last one. They won that game 130-128. They won that game on free throws, though. They should have lost that game to the Rockets. They did beat the Rockets the game before that. That was a home-and-home -home situation. They beat them up pretty good, 140-120. But before that, man, they were struggling. They lost handedly to the New Orleans Pelicans, 136-104. Lost to the uh, Indiana Pacers, 107-104. So I have not liked what I've seen from this Kings team here recently. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but the Mavs have low-key won four of the last five. Um, they won outright against the Utah Jazz with nobody playing. No Kyrie, no Luka. A lot of, uh, of the second-tier guys won that game as 10-point underdogs to the Utah Jazz. They won that game by 13. Turned around, went to L.A. without our best player in Luka Doncic, the Kyrie debut game. Beat up on the Clippers, 110-104. Still out on the West Coast, man. I've liked this match team. I'm telling y'all, the morale starting to get high for this team. And I think we've actually put it to the Sacramento Kings here in this one. Not only do I think we money line, I think we win this game pretty comfortably. If you can, I would probably try to find an extended line. I would probably go like Mavs minus four or something like that. Mavs minus four might be like plus 200. I don't have it right here up in front of me. But I think Mavs win this game and win it pretty comfortably, especially if Luka Doncic plays. I'll update y'all as soon as I find out about my guy. But... Y'all know I'm on my Mavs tonight. I have not liked what I've seen from the Kings here recently. The Mavs are playing really good basketball. The debut of Kyrie and Luka is going to be something special, I really think. I think we put it to this Kings team. This Kings team is third in the West right now. Right behind them is fourth in the West in the Dallas Mavericks. I do think when it's all said and done, the Kings are going to start to slide a little bit in the standings. I think they do make the playoffs just barely. I think the Mavs continue to climb these standings. I think right now, currently constructed, the Mavs are the better team than the Sacramento Kings. I think the Mavs win this one outright. I think they win it pretty comfortably, too. So, me personally, I'm taking the Mavs on the money line. I know some of y'all are going to call it fandom. Some of y'all are going to call it that. But we won't know until tonight. Let's see what happens. Give me the Mavs on the money line here in this one. In our last and final matchup of the night, man, we got the Milwaukee Bucks out on the road facing the Los Angeles Clippers. Clippers lying two, surprisingly, man. Total 225 and a half. I say surprisingly because once I found out that Kawhi Leonard was out, I thought this line was going to open up maybe like Milwaukee minus two, something like that. Um, but the Clippers still favored even with that Kawhi Leonard. They're still kind of shorthanded tonight as well as uh, they made a lot of trades at the deadline. Gordon's not going to play tonight, and Eric Gordon Plumley's not going to play. Bone Tylen's not going to play, and like I said, I'm going to know Kawhi Leonard. So it's a weird spot for the Clippers to be laying two. Um, Milwaukee could be sitting some guys as they are on a back-to-back. -back. They played last night in L.A. They beat the Lakers. Um, I thought last night might have been a flat spot for this Milwaukee Bucks team, but then the Lakers went and sat LeBron, and um, the Bucks did come out kind of flat earlier in that game as they were down at half, what, 38-30? No, that wasn't the score. I think they were down eight, though, 
at the beginning of the first half. I think so. And then uh, they came storming back in the second half, won and covered, surprisingly. I think the closing line on that one was eight and a half. They won by nine. Milwaukee, man, they've won, what, nine straight? That's why this line's kind of confusing to me. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to stay away. Um, Milwaukee's won nine straight. The Clippers are sitting all these guys, but they're still favorited. I feel like the, the books might know something I don't. I think Milwaukee, like I said, could be sitting some guys. That's In my mind, that's the only way this line makes sense. If I were to lean anywhere, man, I would probably be Clippers laying the two. Um, I know they're missing a lot of guys in this one, but they're at home. They did lose to Dallas in their last one. They should bounce back. Uh, Paul George might have a nice game. Milwaukee, I really think they can sit some guys on this back-to-back. Not a really a great spot for them. I think this could be the flat spot. Uh, they've just been playing really dominant here re- recently. So I lean Clippers laying the two. Again, I'm probably not going to bet this game uh, until I get more information, or I'll probably just leave it alone in its entirety. So make sure you're following me on Twitter. I'll update y'all on this one. But if I were to lean anywhere right now at this current time of day, it would probably be Clippers laying the two here in this one. And that's going to conclude today's episode on the Jam Session on February 10th, 2023, man. Thank y'all for watching. Smash that like button for your guy, man. Subscribe if you're new. And drop your like down in the comments. As you know, I love going through seeing who y'all like, man. My best bets can be found at Pig Dogs Premium, including my $15 NBA Jam Session play, man. We've hit three in a row, including 13 of our last 21. I think that's like 61% in that span. So we're trying to get back hot in the NBA, man. I love tonight's play as well. I think we go for four straight. Scoop it up over at Pig Dogs Premium. Follow me on Twitter at ParlayGuyJays. That's where I update y'all on late injury news. Let y'all know if my mind changes due to late information. Coming out of the association, man, I also drop free parlays, free plays, and all that great stuff over there on Twitter, man. So make sure you're following me there. 11 game card tonight in the NBA. We're going to try to smash it per usual, man. A lot of action for us tonight. We're going to pick our spots. We're going to make some money tonight, man. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs. I'm going to talk to y'all on Twitter. Talk to y'all in the comments, man. See y'all in the morning. I'm out. Peace.